I've also applied to plenty of job applications when I first started, and I've been rejected, ghosted, and failed many initial rounds of interviews. It's really easy to blame on the company or the process or whatever, but there are two very important things you need to remember. I've been going through a lot of comments on this channel, and one of the most common type of questions I always get is something along the lines of, is cybersecurity for me? Why can't I land a job in cybersecurity? Or is it too late for me to even join in this career path? If you're one of those people that have this kind of question lingering in your head, then give me about 7 minutes to answer those questions and change your mindset. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then my name is Jono and I work in cybersecurity. Now let's address the first question, is cybersecurity for me? I know a lot of you guys have this question, even I had this question when I first started. So just like what I did at the start, we need to break it down into different areas. The first area we need to tackle is, why are you interested in cybersecurity? This is especially important because it'll be the thing that drives you forward into pursuing and continuing this path. So ask yourself, why are you interested? Is it the job security? Is it the salary? Is it the work that you get to do? For job security, I would say you don't really need to worry about losing your job. Unless you're actually not doing your job or your company goes under, there's a very good chance that you don't even have to worry about being let go. Cybersecurity is fundamental to every single business. With that said, cybersecurity is also a cost center. And that means it's not a department that generates profit for a business. Now, when you think about this, the common logic for businesses would be to try and minimize their costs while maximizing profit, right? So that means if you've already made it into cybersecurity team, which is a cost center that is already at the minimum, there's actually a very low chance that a business is willing to go under that minimum baseline. This leads me to my second point, which is the salary. By now, we're probably all aware that cybersecurity can earn you big money. And this is not a myth as some people might claim. Money was definitely one of the major factors that drove me into picking this career path. Let's face it, a lot of people might say that you shouldn't have money as your motivation to work, but I kind of disagree. Being able to live comfortably, especially in this highly inflated economy, is definitely a legitimate factor to consider when picking up any career. I've gone through how much you can earn in cybersecurity as a stock analyst in this video here if you want to check out the numbers. So the question of whether you like doing the work in cybersecurity is also very important because that's going to be your life for the next couple of years. I'm just going to be transparent and tell you guys, cybersecurity is not easy. For the general population, this is not your typical 9 to 5 and sometimes it gets kind of boring as well. I've came across enough people that think that working in cybersecurity is the same as hacking stuff and fighting against the bad guys like how they show in the movies. System breach. Oh. Firewall 1. We got a problem. What? Someone synced a rat to one of my servers, a remote access tool. We're being hacked. I would say 99% of the time, you'll be responding to just basic tickets, alerts, and common user problems, and they are gonna bore the heck out of you. So the number one thing is to set your expectations right. And this video might help you be more realistic about this career path. Anyway, that was why you want to get into cybersecurity. We need to talk about the how. How do you get into cybersecurity? This question is equally important and it will help you decide if cybersecurity is too late for you. I'm gonna go by the majority of the comments I see which are generally people who don't know anything about cybersecurity or even any experience with dealing with computers. Alright, I'm gonna be honest with you guys on this part as well. If you don't have any experience with dealing with computers, figuring out why your monitor screen isn't working, or even figuring out how to uninstall apps on your computer, you are going to have a very hard time. Not impossible, but it will take you a much longer time for you to get the hang of the basics. But let's say you do know most of your way around a computer, then your only next step is to obtain the required knowledge on cybersecurity. And this includes both theoretical knowledge and practical experiences. Usually this comes in the form of a degree or certification. For most people, certification is the way to go. Now the assumption is that the majority of the people that are looking into this are either working full-time with another job or some other full-time commitment. So with the limited free time that you have after all that, realistically, you need at least six months to finish the course properly like the Security Plus for example. So essentially, if you have half a year to spare and you're generally tech savvy, it's not too late. But if you're not tech savvy, like you don't know your way around a computer, 
I would generally add another year or so to it. But for everyone's sake, it's never too late to start your cybersecurity journey. Now let's tackle the final question that a lot of you guys have, and that's feeling like you can't land a job in cybersecurity. Most of you guys might have heard from the news that cybersecurity jobs are often high in demand and companies across the world are constantly looking to hire new people. But when you start applying, you'll find out that you can't seem to land a job, or maybe you can't even land an initial interview. I've also applied to plenty of job applications when I first started and I've been rejected, ghosted and failed many initial rounds of interviews. It's really easy to blame on the company or the process or whatever, but there are two very important things you need to remember. The first thing is you need to drill it into your head that your time, focus and energy should be on the things that you can control. If you apply to 10 companies and all 10 of them rejects you, then you need to evaluate what you can change yourself. Find out what are the constants, what are the variables. For example, if you have one single resume or a CV and you're just sending the same thing to 10 different companies, a lot of times that won't work. Different job positions have different requirements. So it's important that you tweak your resume to fit the requirement of the position. Now I can already hear you guys say, oh, that's so much effort and work. Yeah. Obviously, that's going to be a lot of work. If your initial strategy of just blasting the same exact resume to all different job applications and you're not getting any response, something needs to change. I just randomly thought of a similar comparison to this, which are phishing emails. 99% of the time, the easy phishing emails that gets blocked are the same generic ones that gets blasted to everyone. But the ones that are tailored to specific individuals often have a higher rate of success. So a bit of story to take away from that. Now, there are also cases where you've gone the extra steps with your resume and your knowledge and your skills to fit the job description and somehow you still don't land an interview. Well, unfortunately, luck also plays a part in this process. Sometimes someone else was just there at the right place at the right time than you. That's something out of your control. And all you can do at that point is just to soldier on and don't give up. As long as you are honest to yourself and you're properly reevaluating your resumes and how you're applying jobs, then statistically, you're bound to succeed. Okay, I know sometimes it's really demoralizing when you're being told one thing and you're experiencing another. I really hope this video gave you guys some motivation. That's it from me. Thanks for watching.